Horn went beep, engine purred, friendliest sounds you've ever heard. Little blue truck went down the road, said beep to big green toad. Uh, those are the opening words to this book right here. Uh, little blue truck, little blue truck. Uh, this was a favorite of our children when they were younger. We read this for many, 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 many. I don't know where my picture just died. So that's okay. Then you got it right here. Threw me off. Many, many, many um, nap times and bedtimes. We read Little Blue Truck, and it became a very favorite. And Little Blue in this story. He, together with all of his animal friends, horse, cow, pig, chicken, goat, all of them, they meet a big dump. And the big dump gets himself into trouble. The big dump gets into trouble because of his own pride, his own arrogance. He literally gets stuck, stuck in the mud. And it takes Little Blue and all of his friends and all of his companions, it takes them all their might and all their strength to push the dump out of the mud. And so the dump and the readers, they learn a very valuable lesson. That all of us, at times, we need help. We need a helping hand from a few good friends. Now, stories can teach in a very powerful way, can't they? And Jesus knew that. And Jesus was a master of it. And as we continue to work through the gospel of Mark, Mark, who wants to so show Jesus in his might and his power in action, performing miracles, healing people, driving out demons, as much as Mark wants to do that, he has always said from the very beginning that Jesus, he was a preacher and a teacher. And so in Mark chapter 4, Mark gathers together a collection of stories. Stories that Jesus used to teach. Are you listening? Are you listening to those stories as Jesus wants to teach you with them? Jesus says, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So I have a little test for you today. Don't worry. It's pretty easy. I think you'll pass. Okay? A little test. Take your hands and reach around on your head and just feel around a little bit. And is there anything protruding off the sides of your head? Yeah. Is there any external organ that's sitting there, this sensory auditory device that allows you to, to hear and communicate and understand language? Do you have ears? Then Jesus is talking to you. And maybe for some of us, maybe we don't have the full functionality of those ears, that, that sensory device that God has given to us, but we have eyes. And we have hands that can touch, and God has made all kinds of ways that we can communicate with one another and understand words and language. And so Jesus is calling all of us to listen, to listen to his stories and to listen to the point that is behind those stories. He is calling us to have open ears, but more importantly, to have open hearts. And when Jesus spoke at this time, there were two very distinct audiences to whom he was talking to. There were the, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the, the religious elite who thought they had God all figured out and really had rejected the idea that Jesus was the Son of God. And then you had the followers Jesus' disciples, the, the people who were listening, who wanted to hear more, who had put their faith and trust in him, and, and maybe they didn't have a full and complete understanding and grasp of what, all that that meant, but they did believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And in our own hearts, both of those audiences come together into one. 
And so Jesus calls us to hear, to listen to his stories. Because he is a master storyteller and an excellent teacher, but he is so much more than that. Jesus is your God, your Lord, and your Savior. So let's listen to this first story that Jesus told as he's teaching from the boat and the crowds are gathered on the shoreline and he says there's this farmer, right? And he goes out and scatters his seed and he's a little bit reckless with it. He's just, he's throwing it everywhere. And so some of the seed, it lands on that hard, compacted path and has nowhere to go. And the birds come and, and they eat it up. And then some of the seed, it, it falls in those rocky places. That rocky soil, and so it's able to, to spring up quickly, start to grow, but then when the scorching Texas sun comes out in full force, what happens? It withers up and it dies. Now, this picture seems very interesting to me, but some of the seed, yes, it goes in among the thorns, right? And among the weeds and those thorns and those weeds, as that seed is trying to, to produce and grow up, the, the thorns, they choke it out and can't survive. But then there's a seed that landed on the good soil and it grows and it grows well. It produced a bountiful crop 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. Amazing, beautiful. This is exactly what the farmer wanted. And it's a simple, easy to understand story that Jesus tells about this natural process that we can all understand and we can get. But later, Jesus explained the deep spiritual meaning to that story. And as Jesus does that, he calls us to listen and to engage with his story. He wants you to ask yourself, what kind of soil is my heart? When that seed of God's word is cast out and it lands on your heart, when, when a preacher preaches and a teacher teaches or a friend admonishes you or you read it for yourself out of the Bible and that seed is cast onto your heart, what kind of heart does it meet? That hardened, compacted heart that rejects Jesus' message, would you also stand among some of those in that crowd that day who refused to listen to Jesus, who refused to accept him as the Son of God and, and thereby give the authority his words demanded? Do you struggle to listen to Jesus and, and accept his words? Maybe, maybe it's not all of it, but, but are there places some. No, where, where Jesus says to you that here there is a line of morality and holiness and righteousness and, and yet your heart it wants to cross that line. Or where Jesus calls you to show kindness and compassion in a relationship, but in that particular relationship, you can't show love because you have withheld forgiveness and you're holding on to anger. Or when Jesus calls you to trust him fully, completely, entirely for your salvation, but your heart, no, it needs to find something, at least one little thing that, that you can take credit for, that God saw, and that's the reason that you have found favor in his sight. Is our heart that rocky soil? We, we're excited to hear God's word. We're excited to know that Jesus is our Savior from all sin, that he has forgiven us, that he went to the cross for us, 
That's amazing, it's great, but, but that's enough for us. We don't want that word to go deeper, or we don't take the steps for it to go deeper and get its words, its roots planted firmly into that rich, abundant, life-giving word of God. We don't take the time to, to explore it more deeply or to connect with other Christians so that they can encourage us and strengthen us in our faith and that that faith can really grow in God's word. And then, when challenge comes, when persecution comes, when you meet somebody who questions your faith or you head off to that college campus where there are people who are not going to allow you to just live peacefully with your own views and your own religion, and you're going to be called to fight for your faith, you're going to be called to defend it, are you putting yourself in the danger that under that scrutiny under that heat and that oppression that you might shrink back and, and you might shrivel up? Have you put yourself, because you've hardened your heart, have you put yourself in the danger that the devil might come and he might snatch away this, this precious, generous gift of God that he's given to you? Or maybe in your life right now, maybe there are those, those thorns, those weeds that are growing up around you, the the stresses and the concerns that come against you from this world. And they threaten, oh, they, they threaten to choke out that faith and that hold that you have on Jesus as your Savior. What kind of soil is your heart? As we listen to Jesus' stories, Jesus' stories are going to lead us to do several things. And first of all, Jesus' stories are going to lead us to repent of our hardness. They're going to lead us to turn back to him because it's in those moments when we find that our heart has become hard or our heart is that rocky soil or the thorns and the weeds are growing up among us. It's at that time that we need to turn back to our God and ask for him to till our hearts into that good soil. To till our hearts into that good soil where his word, his powerful and effective word, where it can produce. And it will. Because not only does Jesus' stories lead us to repent of our hardness, but Jesus' stories lead us to rejoice in his grace. An incredible grace that he has, this undeserved love where he will work in our hearts. He will make them that good soil and it will produce, it will produce faith and hope in Christ. This eternal hope that we can grab onto, it'll produce calm and peace even in the stresses and the turmoils of this life, even when those thorns threaten. It will produce confidence to speak and defend God's word. It will produce love and kindness sprouting up out of that good soil. And it may seem small and it may seem insignificant, but God's word has this amazing power to produce amazing things. And so we rejoice in his grace. And we rejoice in his comforting promises. Look at the promises that Jesus gave to his followers. He said to them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. Faith in Jesus was that secret. Trust that he was who he said that he was. That he was the son of God sent from heaven. See, Jesus told these stories because he wanted to get the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, he wanted to get them to wrestle with them, to, to think about them to call them to turn from their ways. But to his followers, to his disciples, he said, the secret of the kingdom of God is given to you. You don't need to be worried. You have this incredible treasure. And it's a secret because it's a conclusion that we wouldn't draw otherwise. That the almighty, powerful, divine God over all creation, the very one who has created and set in place these natural laws that Jesus uses to teach his stories, that that very one, he would humble himself and come down to this earth. 
He would live in our shoes. He would humble himself and he would come for those hearts that would be hardened against him and reject him. He would humble himself and he would come down for those hearts who would want to cast and throw their rocks and their stones at him because he didn't fit their definition of what the Messiah should be. He came down for those hearts who because they were so concerned about the worries and the concerns of this world, they twisted together a crown of thorns and crushed it into his brow. This almighty God who would come down to this earth for your heart and my heart, who would run to the cross in order to change our hearts, in order to make them that good soil so that his word could produce in us. He has come to transform our hardened, rocky hearts and to make them hearts into which and through which God's grace might freely flow. And so as you hear the other stories that Jesus tells, Jesus' stories also lead us to reflect his light. One of the other stories that Jesus said to his disciples was this, after he encouraged them that they had this secret of the kingdom of God, he said this, he said, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. I've always wondered, as I've read these, I've always wondered exactly what Jesus was talking about when he talks about these hidden things, these these concealed things that need to be brought out into the open, that need to be exposed. And it finally clicked as I was getting ready for today that comes right after Jesus says, you have the secret of the kingdom of God. He wants us to spoil the secret. He wants us to leak the information. He wants us to share this incredible news that we have that Jesus is our Savior. To share that gospel. To be a light. To scatter the seed. To plant it into more and more hearts so that God's word has the opportunity to bring more and more into his light, to draw them into the light. And sure, yes, sometimes we're going to expose darkness. We're going to expose sin. But more importantly, we're going to expose the grace of God that covers over our sins. And allows people to know his love and his compassion for them. What a light to shine. You have been called into the light. You have been called. You have been given the secret of the kingdom of heaven. And God desires that you would share that with others. And we together, that we would be a beacon to our world. A beacon of this light of kindness and love and grace. What an amazing opportunity we have. Pastor Dan and I, earlier this week, we were gathering together with the pastors and the staff of all of our Divine Savior Church campuses. We were putting together our our plans, looking out into the future. What's our vision? And you know what we said? We said in eight years, we want there to be 5,000 people worshiping across Divine Savior Church campuses on a weekend. Some of you remember we talked about that a few years ago. The 10-year plan, now it's the 8-year plan. But more importantly than that, we don't just want people together in worship, but we want people growing in God's Word. And so we said in this next three years, we want to have 200 people serving as DS kids and DS youth leaders, growing up the young people in our congregations with God's Word. We want to have a hundred adults serving as adult leaders, facilitating connect groups, teaching start and grow classes, serving on ministry teams. Because we want to be a church that is all about disciples making disciples. Throwing out the gospel seed and allowing God to cause it to grow and produce. 
And here locally today, we're, we're going to look back and we're going to reflect on the, on the last year and all that God has done in us and through us. We're going to celebrate that. We, later on, we're going to talk about the plans that we've made for the next year. How we want to average over 100 people on our Sunday morning worship services. And we want to average over 50 people in our connect groups because we want to see people growing in God's word. We want to see this gospel seed being planted. And we're praying, we're praying that God will allow us to see the fruit that it produces. The harvest. What amazing. 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. And so as we reflect Jesus' light, and as Jesus calls us to to plant and scatter the seed of the gospel, this forgiveness that might come to more and more hearts, it's going to take work, it's going to take effort, it's going to take energy. Those are big, lofty plans that we have made, and we're going to have to work hard. But Jesus gives us an incredible promise. Through his stories, Jesus also leads us to rest in his power. As we think about these big lofty goals that we can rest in Jesus' power. Look at what Jesus said at the end of Mark chapter 4. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. What a comfort. Even when you or I sleep, God works. When we set aside the time to to rest, to relax, to worship, God works. And even if we don't accomplish all of our goals and and we don't hit all of our benchmarks and we aren't able to celebrate everything being successful, God works. God works. It's his power that will cause the seed to grow. It is his power that will bring about the harvest. God makes those gospel seeds grow. And the amazing thing is to know that God has been working. He has been producing results in us and through us. And we just get to celebrate. And we get to allow that to then energize us and move us to then put in the work and put in the effort so that we can plant more gospel seeds as we rest in Jesus' power. Best coach ever, master storyteller, excellent teacher. Yeah, Jesus is all of these, but Jesus is so much more. As Mark leads us to see Jesus as a teacher, he also leads us to see Jesus as our redeemer and our rescuer. That gospel gem has been planted in your heart and it will grow and will produce faith and trust and comfort and confidence in Jesus. Our Jesus, who with his stories, he leads us to repent of our hardness, to rejoice in his grace, to reflect his light, and to rest in his power. Amen? Amen.